This, as you can see, hmm, don't know, I won't take my glasses off, but this is me without my glasses. And this was my next project. I decided to use opaque paints. Made a photocopy of this, blown it up to the size I wanted to, stuck it together with tape, and I've gone over with felt tip again, just showing you the where the creases are. Of course, I've got lots of wrinkles. Uh, the dot dotting here is because it's a shadow, so I've got dotted lines, not solid lines. Solid lines are showing me where there's a really, really a, a line that needs definition, and the others not. And there you go, you can roughly see those are eyebrows, and I haven't done much, it doesn't show very much detail at all, just where the teeth and a few highlights here, just the odd lines here and there. Now this, I've then stuck on the window, put my card over the top that I'm going to be painting onto, and I've done a pencil drawing. So I've gone over the top of what I just showed you with the lines and I've drawn it in pencil. Next, reference pictures. Now I took quite a few, again, because it's my face. <laughs> I can take as many as I like and be as patient as I want. A very close up of the eye to help. Another one which is more, which is further away to give me more idea and more details. So that I've got lots of different reference points to look at to help me while I'm painting. Now it's very important to have these and I usually dot them around my board this is the actual one that I ended up painting, but I still had all the other ones around to help me while I was doing it. And da, 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 here it is. This is my self-portrait. Now I've done this monochrome once again, and monochrome, if you don't know, just means it's in one colour. So there's no attempt to try and do any flesh tones whatsoever. It's all done in different greys. Now I used a, a kit H. made by Comart Paints, which is a grey series. And they go from like 10%, 20%, 30%, up to 60% uh, greys, of different greys, up to black and white in this kit. And then they have a warm tone and a cool tone, which you can add. I didn't add any additive to mine. So these are the straight greys, straight out of the bottle. Now I started with 10% uh, which is their lowest but I then mixed my own to get a lighter one. So I then got a white and just put a very tiny bit of black in to mix this lighter shade. And you can see how I've used, some of it's not as easy to see but you can see how just using the, the blending and the variations in the grading of the colour creates this 3D effect. So you can see it in my big lines and here's my wrinkles. But okay, it's my painting too. So I've kind of taken a few wrinkles out. <laughs> well, I think I look a bit younger. I was also really pleased with the dimples. I do have dimples. And again, very simple technique. And you can see how that just with a little bit of Shading here, shading at the top, lightning under, shows my dimples. They come out really well. The teeth, the mouth was a lot harder to do. And um, I had to do that over a few times to try and get that right. I made for myself some stencils. Now, again, I photocopied these on my printer. Or I printed them out off my printer. These are quite dark. You obviously have to make sure you get ones that are exactly the same size. And here you can see I've just cut out a very tiny, you can see where the white is, very tiny holes here. And those are for these highlights. These ones here. And for the mouth, for the teeth, I've also cut out this one here. And that was purely so that I could redo the dark areas. It was, it was, I just got really fed up of having to paint these dark areas again. So I used, a, I used that just to 
stop the overspray from hitting the rest of the painting. I didn't like how it had come out, so I ended up, although I'd considered it finished, I actually went back in, if you like, and redid it. And I just didn't want to ruin any other part of the painting by getting any overspray on it. So I used that cutout to cover it up, and I could just go back in with the dark area and just do a little bit of shading on the teeth um, without damaging the rest of the painting. So those things are very important. These dot highlights, I literally just used white paint with a, with a brush. See that tiny little dot? Oops, there you go. There, that highlight. And also I've got one on the teeth. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, I've got one here, this on the tooth. And again, I used a brush for that. I think if you get the job done and the, the end result is what you want, then fantastic. I also used shields. Now, I, I printed out a few of these, but these are actually my favourite ones. These, these ones here, these shields. Now, if you can see, this is by Ch Chuck Bauman. And you can, you can actually go onto the um, internet. He has a website where you can... He's very happy for you to copy these, download these for free. I printed it onto my um, onto photo paper. This is glossy photo paper, so it's nice and thick but also it's water resistant because it's glossy and I printed those out and cut them out myself I did a smaller one as well this is the same one, the bigger one, the smaller one and these are very useful when you, you want a, a sharp line you just use these shields in different places and this help also helps a lot like to get these here around the eye you know, this is these shields so this is actually done freehand with the help of some shields just the odd little bit which I've done cut out some masks uh, but as you can see yeah happy as Larry with this the techniques you will learn from painting portraits all the blending and the shading if, if you can do a portrait you can paint anything apparently that was not my words that's somebody else's and I wish I could tell you whose they were but I can't remember anyway have fun I will be bye